where he hits a pitch and watches the ball fly into the bleachers for a home run. Landing at H equals 5.5 meters higher than it was struck. When visiting with the fan that caught the ball, he learned that the ball was moving with final velocity 38.85 meters per second at an angle theta f equals 34 degrees below the horizontal. Assume the ball encountered no air resistance. Use a Cartesian coordinate system with the origin located at the ball's initial position. Okay, so part A asks to find an expression for the initial velocity in the x direction. V0x. What we know about the x component of the motion is that there is no acceleration in the x component. Gravity affects the trajectory of the ball, but gravity is always pointing down. So, the velocity in the x direction is always constant. So it's the same here at the beginning, V0x, as it would be here when it was cut, Bfx. Okay, so with that information, we know that these velocities have to be the same. B0x has to be equal to Bfx, and that is useful because we know everything about uh, that point in time. We know that the final velocity was at an angle theta f with the horizontal. And that happened a distance h from the ground. So we can see the component of interest here is going to be this component, which is the same as this component. You look at that triangle, it's a right triangle, so you can use your trigonometric identities to find this component, the horizontal component. So mb 0 x has to be equal to bf cosine of theta x or theta final. And that's it, that's the solution for part A. Now for part B, we are asked to calculate the magnitude in meters per second of the vertical component of the ball's initial velocity. Okay, so one thing you want to appreciate is that at this level, everything would be the same. Or at this level, everything will be the same. The speed would be a certain quantity going in that direction. It would be the same quantity going in this direction. This angle here would be equal to that angle there. All right, and so that happens here as well, etc. It even happens here. This smaller component would be equal to, or speed would be equal to that smaller speed. This smaller angle would be equal to that smaller angle. So what I'm going to appreciate is that these will have the same speed. And if I just look at this point where I know everything about that point, I know the speed at, at which it's going, I know the angle at which it's going, and I know how high off the ground that happened. 
And so that's the same as if I were just looking at, I'll put this point in orange, at this point. And so, well, that's this point here in the trajectory. And all I need to know is, okay, it's going to so at some speed at this angle. If I know that, I know how fast it's going to go to be going when it hits the, this point, when it hits the ground. And in fact, just using my trigonometric identities, I could find the y component, which is what I'm being asked for. Now I know that here I start with a initial speed going towards the ground of b of y. That is going to become larger because throughout this distance h, gravity is taking effect. And so the length of this vector would have to be shorter than the length of that vector, but the direction will be the same. And I know how much it's going to grow because I know the acceleration. In fact, you know that the difference between the squares of speeds is equal to 2a x minus x0. Okay. Now I'm going to adapt this formula to the problem at hand. So my initial point actually is b of y. My final one would be vgy. My acceleration due to gravity is g, and it's in the negative direction. And the difference is going to be the difference between my final point, which is 0, minus my initial point, which is 5.5. .5, or I'll just leave it in variables, h. From here, all I have to do is uh, solve this put in the numbers that I have, and the answer will come right out. I am looking for this quantity, so let's do a little bit of algebra. Vgy squared is going to be equal to negative 2g times h plus pfy. Okay. So that is going to be the same as 2gh plus bf sine of theta f. So to find my final velocity when it hits the ground in the y direction, all I have to do is take the square root of 2gh plus bf times sine of theta f where g is 9.8 meters per second squared. Bf is given in the problem as 38.85 and h is equal to 5.5. When I compute this, then I get that the answer is 24 point something. Okay, this is part b. Um, let's see, part C. Calculate the magnitude in meters per second of the ball's initial velocity. Well, you know that its initial velocity in the y direction has to be equal to the velocity that hits the ground, right? So like I was saying before, everything at that point would be equal to everything at that point once it returned to the ground. So we know, we just found out what the speed in the y direction would be. We know what the speed in the x direction would be because that's the same everywhere. 
So we just need to put these two things together. Remember your Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Right? So my answer for this is going to be that um, the initial velocity, V0 squared, would be equal to B0 x squared, which I know. plus bgy squared, which I also know. Uh, then I will just need to take the square root of both sides. And that turns out to be uh, 40.2. And that was part C. Let's see if I have enough space for part D. It says, find the angle above the horizontal in degrees at which the ball left the bat. Okay, well, so for part um, D, All I have to do is find that angle, and so you know how to find that angle. If you have a triangle, and you know the y and the x component, you know that this angle would be related to the tangent, and that the tangent of theta would be equal to y over x. In our situation, we have bx, and by. And so I just solve for that. And I get that the angle theta zero is equal to the inverse tangent of by over bx. Both quantities I know. And that turns out to be, I don't remember what it turns out to be. Uh, let's see. I got 36.79.